All right, guys, we're back, and now it's time to take another look at subnetting, and I'm going to give you another example or another way to handle this. So we're back to our same problem, and we've got the 15.0 network, but now we know that because we wanted to create eight subnets, we've got this new mask. So I broke out. I started with base 10, but then I converted to binary. So here's our third octet and our fourth octet in binary. And because we're using this 250 or 224 uh, subnet mask, we now know that this right here is the subnet field that we're worried about. We also know that my patterns that I needed to use were these guys here. Remember that these were, when I stole three bits, these were the possibilities in three bits. Okay. Now, previously we just simply divided out the, the total number of subnets into the number of possible hosts and then we did some quick, simple, and easy conversion between the ranges. And then we figured out what our subnet mask was based on the number of bits we wanted to steal from the host portion. But what if we take a look at those actual binary patterns? So what I'm going to suggest to you here is that if you know something about uh, the internal workings of this, it turns out that these binary patterns can actually be substituted right here into my network address. I know it sounds crazy, but, but bear with me here. We can see that zeros right now are, are already in there. If I substitute zeros in there, well, what do I get? This is 192.168.15.0. What if I substitute 001 in here? So I'm going to change this to a 1. What does this become? This new address becomes 32. Well, that's starting to look a little familiar to us. What happens if we take the next one? What if we change it like this? Well, 128.64. And this actually goes out. We'll do uh, we'll do this example down here, maybe. Um, well, we'll do we'll do two at the bottom here, just to save a little bit of time. If I substitute in right here, this guy. Well, what is that? That's 128 and 64, or 192. So this address way down here. And that makes this one one nine two one sixty eight. Whoa, fifteen two twenty four. All right. So there's my range of addresses. So what we've done here is instead of doing the division, we took a look at the binary patterns, substituted them into the subnet field, and got all of our subnet IDs. We'll just do the exact opposite. Well, if this is the subnet ID, what is the top of the range here? The top of the range here has to be 31. If this is the subnet, what's the top of the range here? 63. And so my next subnet was actually, uh, remember that I added 31 here, but my next subnet would be 96, so that would make this guy 95. Coming down here, this would have been a range of 223. And we know that the last address in this range Maybe we'll go ahead and put that up there. So that would follow on to these guys here. And there we have it. All we did now was manipulate the binary, stuck the binary patterns into the subnet field. Everybody has the same subnet mask because we subnetted the space. And we said, well, if I substitute the binary patterns, can I, can I get my subnet IDs? And of course, these are the broadcast addresses at those particular subnets, and then I would pick routers and hosts for those particular subnets. All right, so that's subnetting, and the important thing here is all we did was manipulate 
the subnet mask. We changed the length of the subnet mask. We stole bits into the host portion. And remember that the, the address that we were fooling around with earlier was 192.168.15.35. And in the class full address, he was on the 15.0 network, but when we subnetted, he was on the 15.32 subnet. All right, well, let's, uh, let's play another little game. Let's do a little supernetting. What happens if we steal bits the other way? So I'm going to rewrite this. And now the mystery goes something like this. Um, I have no idea what I want to do here, so let's just start stealing bits and we'll see what happens. So I'm just going to steal one, but notice that I'm stealing bits from the network portion now. Okay, what would this new mask be? Well, I just stole one bit, so this changes this from 255 to 254. And the last octet in the subnet mask is now zero. So now the question is, what network is this particular host on? Well, he's still 15. Let's put 35 in here. Remember, the 35 looked like this. If we do our anding process, we get 192, 168. What's this one work out to be? Well, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, oh, oh, 0. Well, that's a little bit of a change. And then these are all zeros again. We convert this to base 10 and this to base 10. This one's pretty easy. That one's dot zero. So we'll bring down 192. Whoa. Let's try that again. 192, 168. But what's this one? Well, 128, 64, 32, 16, 8 plus 4, plus 2. Huh. Well, that looks like, what do you think? We got, remember that? So what's happened here is that we, we now have stolen, so just to be clear, we've stolen bits from the network portion. So what's happening here is we're binding networks together. We're increasing the size of our address space. Subnetting steals bits from the host portion. You create more subnets, but each subnet has a fewer nodes per subnet. Now we're putting networks together, so what we're expecting to have happen is this address to change right here. So 2 plus 4 is 6, and then another 8, 14. Oh, that's pretty crazy. So what's happening here is that we just actually glued networks together. So this host, which looks like it's on the 15 net, is not. It's actually on the 14 network. So now the range of addresses that would match because we changed the mask would now be 14.0 to, now let's write it another way, 192, 168, 14.0 to 192, 168, 15. Dot 255. So we glued, because we did this, we glued chunks of address space together. We stole one bit, and how many possibilities were in one bit? Two. How many networks did we glue together? Two. Wow, well that was that was kind of fun. Let's that, let's um let's do this. Let's let's steal some more bits. So now I'm gonna change this one to a zero. So what's our hint? I stole two bits. How many networks do you suppose I'm going to glue together? Well, there are four possibilities in two bits, so I'm going to go with four networks here, but let's see what happens. So let's do our anding again. And again, this one's pretty easy. It looks like it's still going to be zero. 
Uh, but what happens here now? Zero, 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 one, one. We got another zero here. So that makes this eight plus four, 12 dot zero. So what I'm telling you is that now the range of addresses that match because of my new subnet mask, which is, oh, by the way, 252, looks like this. One, 192, 168, 12.02, 192, 168, 15.255. Again, we've glued four networks, 12, 13, 14, 15 together, so we have a lot more hosts in the network. We now have a thousand hosts that match this particular mask. And this is really how aggregation and route summarization works. So you probably need a little bit of proof. Well, it's pretty straightforward that um, the 12 network matches here. So it really doesn't matter if I put anything here no matter what I put in this last octet, I will get zero down here. And there's nothing I can do about these zeros. So that keeps the, the 12 net pretty clear. But what about uh, you know things that are below that? What if I have the 11 network? How does the 11 network work? So let's change this a little bit. So we'll do two examples real quick here. Let's take two host addresses, 192, 168, 11, and, oh, I don't know, uh, we'll do, yeah, 97. And 192, 168, 16.5. Okay? Well, 11.97 looks something like this. Well, 11 is 8 plus 3, so that looks like that. And 97, ah, that's a tough one. Let's see. Um, I'll do 128, 64, and 32, and I need one more. Like that. Well, my new mask was here. What does that look like? Well, I get a 0 here. Uh-oh. And then all zeros here, okay? So now this range is, so this host, 11.97, is actually on the 192.168.8.0 network. So that actually tracks with our example of being in the range of 12 to 15. All right, let's take 16. 16 actually looks like this. And we did five. Looks something like that. So now when we do the ending process, we actually get something that looks like this. And these will be all zeros again. So 16.5 is actually on the 192, 16.0 network. Okay? And that range would be up to 19. And there's our proof again. So really, again, what we did was we glued things together and the common thread in all of this is what are the common binary patterns? What are the binary patterns that put you in one network or another? And all we did was manipulate the subnet mask. Well, I hope this series of videos on subnetting and supernetting helps you with your own subnetting problems and I'll see you in the next one.